Welcome to the RJI Futures Lab, where we help you make your organization more innovative. I'm Ruben Stern. This week, an automated tool to check the authenticity of photos and a new approach to audio on the web. The Verified Pixel Project is a new tool built to help newsrooms quickly screen user-submitted photos to make sure the images can be trusted. Futures Lab reporter Adam Pressler explains how it works. Hundreds of user-submitted photos are seen by newsrooms every day. The Verified Pixel Project has created a tool which allows journalists to more accurately verify user content before using it. The project is a Knight-funded prototype grant to do automated image analysis to help verify pictures sent to newsrooms. So the idea is how can newsrooms capitalize on user-generated content in a less risky way uh, through basically automation of image and metadata. It starts with the user submitting a picture to an email address. And that email address can either be uh, a standalone one that they create once and use for many different events, or it could be event specific. Next, the tool takes over by running tests on the image. What camera was used to take the picture, when the picture was taken, where the picture was taken, including mapping that on a Google map overlay. We'll also do some automated uh, tests on reverse image search. So we'll use Google reverse image search and TinEye reverse image search. And so we actually look to see if the picture is a camera original or if it's actually been opened in an image editor, like let's say Photoshop. The tool allows journalists to verify the legitimacy of user submitted content with results returning in just over a minute. For social media, right? Social media is a big draw for people. If you're actually taking a picture that someone emailed you that they took from social media, you're not gonna have a lot of that exit information anyway. Our tool still provides value in that it's gonna do automated reverse image search for you. So obviously uh, it'll tell you if this, if this image has been seen before. Journalists need to plan on adding verification to their fact checking process. I spend a lot of time going to newsrooms and saying, hey look, here's what you should do. Here's, here's steps that you can do to actually verify something to help journalists get there faster and uh, really reduce the risk in using user-generated content. Because right now what we found, unfortunately, is people either misunderstand th uh, the availability of what can be done today or uh, in some certain cases they're just not, they're really not performing verification, um, which I think is troublesome, right? And so what I'm, I'm not trying to shame people into doing verification, we're trying to make it easier for them so, they'll, they, so they will incorporate it. Stewart and the Verified Pixel Project are hopeful that with more time, users will be able to layer specific tests and features together, optimizing the tool on a user-by-user -user basis. For the Futures Lab, this is Adam Pressler. Plans to expand the tool include indexing email addresses. That way, information related to the user who submitted the photo could also be returned with the search. Although internet audio has become more popular in recent years, the way news organizations deliver that audio on the web hasn't really changed much. But NPR affiliate WBUR in Boston is developing a new approach that gives listeners more control. We really decided that we wanted to do just something interesting with audio. If you know like a lot of audio, like video to some extent on the web is just like, it's pretty much everyone does the same thing. It's a, it's a boxy player that like lives in an article template in a page that was really designed for text and visuals. And it really wasn't designed in terms of like any kind of serendipity, any kind of listening, like infinity listening. Um, so we really decided to go for more of a Spotify experience or a Pandora experience. The new website, currently in alpha, has an audio player anchored to the bottom of the screen providing persistent audio. This allows users to explore the site without interrupting their listening experience. Plus, users can switch between a live feed of WBUR and archived audio. But these aren't the only planned features of the new site. People really wanted a listening experience and they wanted a more DVR type experience. Um, so not just streaming, which is really important, but they wanted the ability to save for later, you know, be able to skip forward and backwards, um, all the things that you would do in television now um, that should really translate over to audio. Um, we didn't really feel like anybody was doing that. The website, which has a functional mobile version, will try to make sharing audio on the web easier. We really feel strongly that like the problem with audio right now is that it's not that easily shared. It's not that it's not easy to remix it. There aren't, you know, there's no such thing as like really gifts for audio. A lot of the platforms, it's a real afterthought, um, you know, so we really feel like it's a big commitment to make sure that there's less, less friction with sharing audio, not more. WBUR plans to launch the new website in early 2016. For the Futures Lab, this is Daniel Shapiro. The team at WBUR is also looking at how to make the technology available for other newsrooms to use. And that's it for this report from the RJI Futures Lab. I'm Ruben Stern. We'll see you in the future. Thank mm -hmm. you.